Hi there. This is Casey White. I'm an artist, uh, animator, character designer, and uh, I started doing this series of illustrations called Acronym Arena. In it, I draw characters based on acronyms like ASAP and MIA, and I make them into combatants in a great coliseum in the middle of the multiverse. In this video, I'm going to go over five of my first ones on my iPad, and I'm going to go over a speed drawing of them, and each is like two minutes long, and I'm going to show you which one each is. Let's start with GMO. GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism. I did this one during a live stream, and it turned out pretty good. It was based on a lungfish. No, not a lungfish. A mudskipper. A mudskipper is this cool animal that gets out of the water. It's a fish. And, oh, this is the part where we decided if it was a good boy or a bad boy. We decided both. We decided a little bit of both. Uh, the mudskipper is a type of animal that has three legs. So its first, its front pectorals are actually, uh, in this drawing, I made it cat claw. So I also kind of made it a catfish, lungfish creature. But in reality, it's not four feet that it has. I, that's just its third feet. Cats don't, cats, cats and fish don't mix, obviously. Um, but I wanted it to be a green color because that's a sort of mutant color. And then purple really blends well with, with green as a color scheme. Oh man, does it look good. Uh, this is how I decided to do it. And uh, I think that it turned out really well. I wanted to have fun with it, so we made it eating a cupcake. Uh, that was the end of the live stream during that, and it was also my first time drawing an acronym with the iPad. Uh, I think that it turned out really well, especially with the composition. And the next one we'll be drawing is going to be EMP. EMP I, I is electromagnetic pulse. So it has to do with electricity and magnetism. So I, as a kid, I did watch Static Shock. I know a lot of you will think it looks like Static Shock, but I wanted this to be a younger, a younger kid who has both electricity and magnetism. See how I use those arrows to figure out what composition I want to go in, how this is going to look, where, where the direction of the, of the character is looking. Um, I didn't necessarily base it off of Static Shock. Static Shock was just a big influence for me. I, I just feel like that it, it was, it was good. I, w I always want to bring uh, characters that are that are different. And so I wanted him to be floating on a giant magnet. I thought that that would be really cool. It's kind of hard to make a black character that has electricity power and not think of Static Shock or any other of the ones. I, I, it just was coincidence. I wanted them to be a perfect mix of, of electricity and magnetism. So I wanted to also have a lot of bit of a little metal in there. So I gave him earrings and I also gave him braces. In TV shows, it's hard to show braces. Like, you can't draw the intricate details of braces. You have to make them into individual squares or just a line across the teeth. Um, I also had him have a laptop bag with some sort of portable battery in it. Also, right here, you can see that I was drawing a different version of his head to feel out, like, what what even am I doing here? What uh, is he going to be happy? Is he going to be devious? Where is he going with this? Is I, I didn't know how to draw his face, so I tried multiple versions just to feel, just feel it out, to see where it would go. Um, that blue and red, you see how I'm mixing it right there? That's the first time I've ever mixed uh, a color in, in, in Procreate. You use Gaussian blur in the settings. Um, it's, it's really fun. Uh, that harsh blue, the teal color, is very reminiscent of, of um, what is it, electricity. And the red is always what magnet colors are. So I wanted that mix, that mix of yellow, blue, and red, which are already primary colors. So it's very easy to uh, <laughs> already have that in there. And um, then I made the shadows facing away from the light source. Uh, that was the end of it. And uh, that's what it looked like in the end. It turned out really well, and I'm happy with the character design with that one. This one is uh, AFK. A lot of people like um, no acronyms that they recognize. Away from keyboard is what AFK stands for. And at first, I, I actually think I was having a bad day during this one. Um, this was supposed to be a little dark. Uh, the, uh, the, the person was away from the keyboard, away from the game, um, because he was dead. And so there's always, I was thinking that there would be a dead body decaying on this ruined abandoned desk and there'd be weeds growing out of it and the the ghost of the spirit the, the spirit of this person who died playing video games would be coming out of the computer and maybe like a retro futuristic but i really couldn't figure out the composition so i kept playing with the computer and i kept playing with the composition and i made it 
I tried to figure out, I'm good at drawing skeletons, but I tried to figure out what the composition itself would be. And I, I inevitably gave up on that. I said, don't, don't make it creepy. Make him, don't make him dead. What if he's a zombie? And so then I was like, well, what if he's not a zombie? What if he's just a nerdy kid with some VR goggles connected to like a 90s um, computer dial up? And I thought at first that there would be a hologram coming out of it instead of his ghost, a hologram protect protecting him. That cat you saw was like, what if it's a meme? Like that's what's on the internet. But then I thought, no, no, he's playing a video game. Let's make it a night. I had just, this is the first time that I used a, um, a brush like this it's uh it's in the light in the light sort of area of the brushes and it lights up like neon and i added the grid because i could figure out how to do a grid pattern on it and i really at this point i was just playing around with what looks like a hologram what effects outside of it make it feel like a hologram and there's always these lines that are broken up into like stagnant sort of staccatic lines and the grid kind of goes outside of the work of the line and this the glitch effect kind of breaks the line work um the kid i based a lot off of like i don't know a marty mcfly sort of feel um he's very young he's much smaller than the night and that adds to the composition that shows a dichotomy between your big character and your small character if ever you have a big character and a small character, you really want to push that. Um, I made this character more have more red colors in there, and I added the yellow because that's in the warmer spectrum of, of color. Because the the night was a bluer color, and I created that glow around him. And then I made the shadows um, going to the left because the light source was the night. This next actor acronym was one of my favorites. Uh, it's called Sonar, or I called it Sonar, and that sounds for sound sound something um i don't remember all the acronyms i've drawn 150 but sonar i knew was used by bats and i thought what if this was a giant star wars like bat creature that inevitably lost its ability to fly and became uh bipedal like most birds do you know how most birds that don't fly anymore like ostriches or emus have these giant legs well it was bigger than an emu what if it was bigger than an emu and it had these giant rhinoceros sort of feet and at, at first i made it those are frog feet but i i inevitably realized that and that anatomically speaking the heavier the animal the larger the feet are going to be the more padded especially in a desert climate um at this phase i was just having fun drawing giant ears and giant mouth a giant mouth to to send out acoustic waves at this part, I really wanted to get the anatomy right. You see how, look, I drew a little bird. I drew a little bird of a kiwi to understand the anatomy of it. This is what, that's why this animal is, this, this acronym is one of my favorites. Um, is because you can definitely tell that I thought about the anatomy. Anatomy is very, very important to creature design um, and, and, and alien design. So the, the wings, because it doesn't fly anymore, the wings have become a second set of of ears a second set of ears and so if you look look behind the ear you can see uh oh i love those porcupine uh the porcupine stuff sticking out of the bat as well um but if you look you can see the arms are tucked in like chicken wings and the the fingers are what is creating the wings the fingers are creating the wings and you can see through them to this porcupine hide of a beast i wanted it to have porcupine quills um one because that's the only poison that mammals can recreate is there's a couple uh, mammals that have those and even marsupials that have those sort of porcupine quills um, but now that I've got the uh, line work done you can see my coloring was based off of the sarcastic fringe fish the sarcastic fringe fish has that giant mouth that extends it's got these muscles that expand its cheekbones out or maybe it's like evolved adapted wi wings and fins um at this point i just wanted to get the the composition correct i knew that its fur or its quills would be sandy um would be very sandy because it needs to camouflage in the desert um but because it's a bat and it is a mammal its skin tone is going to be really pink and purple and that really stands out in the contrast against the the more warmly saturated uh fur 
um, you can also, I mean, you can really tell I, I took a lot of, um, uh, uh, inspiration from Star Wars and, uh, the, the sarcastic fringe fish really made me, um, play around with those, those extra set of wings. Um, I also thought that pattern, the spiral pattern could be a sort of motif. Uh, you can see the spiral pattern in it's adapted wings. It's flightless wings. You can see it in the ears. You can see it on the eyes. It's blind. And that's why it uses sonar in the desert. Um, this was just a fun creature design. It was fun. And you look at how his wings light up. Um, that's with some sort of bio, bioluminous luminescence, maybe some sort of algae inside of it, but it creates the light source. So again, you're going to see on the opposite side of that ear, the shadows, the shadows are being forced from that light source. Um, and here it is. This is the final piece with, uh, the acoustic vibration spitting out of it. It could concuss animals and that's how it would catch animals. And I thought that that would be really, really fun. So this is one of my favorites. Yeah. I really loved it. This next guy is the guy that hunts it. Ooh. Um, I wanted to see if I could recreate sonar and have radar, the acronym radar chasing it. Look at those arms. Okay, that's another thing about the uh, anatomy of sonar is look at the arms. That's actually what bats do. There are some bats that travel on the ground and they use their wings like orangutans or apes. I thought radar at first would be another creature design, would be an owl. And owls use their, their cups of, on their faces, on their feathers, to um, catch like a mitt um, the, the sound waves. But I didn't think that it would really work that way. So I started thinking of satellite dishes. And I started thinking that it would be, in a, it would be a people fighting monsters, like monster hunter nomads. And they would hunt down sonars. Um, like sonar would be a species of aliens that the radars, this band of nomads, would have to hunt down. Maybe they're robots. Maybe that's what their prime um, imperative is. And so I tried to create a composition, and inevitably, I scrapped all of it. I scrapped all of it. It didn't end up looking great. So I, I, cause look at the composition. Look, it it feels short. It feels like it's 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 forced. Uh, the the UFO is too close to it. If I was if it was a vertical if it was a this is vertical lands not not landscape, but if it was a landscape portrait, I would have done it. So I started from scratch. I knew that I had the design of what radars would look like, and so I just started drawing these nomads with these um, this armor made out of the hide, the porcupine hide of those uh, flightless bats. Um, and I go back and forth here. I don't know if I'm going to keep drawing this, this nomad. I don't know if I want to keep going. With robots, robots, you need to make it feel real. It doesn't actually need to work, but it needs to feel mechanical in nature. So you can see I have sockets with balls in them, like pinpoints, pins that fit into, you know, um, sockets. And everything is based on something. That chest plate is a fire extinguisher, believe it or not. Um, that satellite dish he has is based off the satellite dish outside my home. I think his pelvic muscles um, above the thigh are grinders. Um, that I have in a barn, and um, the the bot the the ankles, the calves, those are jacks that can be jacked up on um, to take off a tire. Um, his his that that tendon right there, the tendon between the the thighs and the calves are um, based on uh, um, foldy chairs. Foldy chairs. I I made him have a cowboy bounty hunter sort of feel. I wanted that leather. I wanted those tassels. I also ended up um, adding a little bit of Native American uh, into it, uh, in uh, costume design, because I had to cover up some of this. It had to feel lived in. It had to feel like this band of people actually lives in the desert, does things in the desert, um, survives off the land, and has these hides that um, are of their kills, of their triumphant spoilia of animals they've hunted down. Um, which was, which look at that. It created a better composition. It also, um, allowed me to not have to draw a lot. Uh, it creates a better silhouette in the end. Um, I knew that the hide would be a warm saturation. So I really, again, I pushed that dichotomy. I made the 
the robot in comparison to the warmer saturated colors of the sonar i made it a cooler saturation um for the robot radar uh i i also made his chest plate i ended up changing it to a um radar a radio signal dish like you can see this sort of blips on the map that he's searching for it's sort of a mindless a mindless nomad that just kind of is built long ago to hunt down these robots and that's just all it's meant to do um i i really enjoyed it and this is this was the inevitable end of the of the robot design i also again though those shadows need to be on the opposite side of the light source and i pushed that when i made the uh radio dish as his or the radio screen as his chest plate um i made the desert uh his his background and I, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed how the anatomy of this came out. You can see I spent a long time on the, on the sunset. Again, I based it off of the Star Wars universe. So it's like very Tatooine, very multiple stars and sunrises. Um, and that's how I did the robot. It, it has to feel lived in. It has to feel mechanically like it could exist. So those were all of the acronyms. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you guys for having watched all these first acronyms that I did on my on my iPad. Um, if you learned something, I hope I'm I'm really glad that I, and I hope that you guys did learn something. Uh, every composition is different. Every character design is different. I always focus on color or I focus on anatomy. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I, if you want to see more, subscribe and I'll I'll post another episode soon.